coming up on Man Enough. So I went on a date with this guy. We started making out and I was like, okay, we're making out like real hard in this bar. But like, okay, let's just have fun. Like I definitely wouldn't have like been that affectionate on a first date, but I'm trying to go with it. And I think this is something that women do a lot and maybe men do it too. You can tell me you're uncomfortable. (laughs) And instead of stopping and saying, admitting to yourself and the person, hey, I'm a little uncomfortable or I don't want to, you know, setting a boundary, you try and convince yourself that you like it. That is a very common thing for women. And it's something that I'm trying to unlearn of like not trying to like something so that it makes the other person less uncomfortable. Being man enough, what does that mean? It's really manly to mess up, admit you're wrong, and then grow. I couldn't accept that I was evil. So maybe I'm broken, but those broken things could be corrected. Intimacy between a father and a son is me just wanting to like put my head in your lap. I love you, son. You haven't called me a benevolent sexist, but my experience is women are better. Even if it's a positive, it's still not equality. I don't blame men for that. I just blame the system. This is Man Enough. Hello, hello, hello. (laughs) We are back with another episode of the Man Enough podcast. Um, I'm Jamie Heath. I'm Liz Plank. There's no, who's not here? Mm, Justin. Justin. We miss Jay. But that said, we're still moving along. We are. Um, and uh, and he's so- with us in spirit. He's with us. He FaceTimes us sometimes. He FaceTimes you a lot. A lot. <laughs> it's very we, sweet. Well, we're still doing this stuff, right? We're talking about issues that um, can hopefully just help propel humanity every little bit to be better and better. Mm-hmm. And there's so many components to that. There are. This is one. Masculinity. Yes. Which intersects with so many other things um, as well. How are you doing? I'm. Good. Yeah, I'm I like you. So Oh my god, I love I, you so much. I, I feel I'm I'm actually, you know, I'm I'm closer to you physically right now. We're because we're always at one and each we're end. Like Justin's in between us. He, there's always it. someone in between us. So um and you are a really good friend and you mm. give really good advice. You too, Liz. And thanks. And I know that you help our audience so much. And so us being able to go on one on one. It's um, just us. It's just us. Has, we've never done just you and me. No, no. And it's interesting because now we get to have like, you know, conversations. I mean, I don't want to cut you off and I know you don't want to cut me off, but we can interject in the middle of a conversation yes. versus when we're like three and four it of is. us and five yes. of us, you know, you have to let people have their moment. Exactly. And then this way we can kind of go back and forth. Can yes. I start off with, I want you to share a story if you don't mind. Yeah. So I went on a date with this guy and we had a good time. Um, huge gentleman came and got me in his car. I made a reservation, made another reservation for drinks after the reservation, checked in with my dietary restrictions, every, my favorite my favorite uh, restaurant, got a reservation that's like really hard to get, all the things. I get in his car, he gives me this like really gentle hug, and I'm like, oh, he's so like affectionate, asks me, I mean, so many questions, like can't even finish a sentence without being a bit like, what about you? Tell me about you. I'm like, oh my God, this guy's great. And like, there's definitely affection that starts like on that first date, which typically I wouldn't do. Like, I I just feel like I don't, you know, I don't really know you. And, and yeah, you're just kind of getting to know someone. And, but I was like, let's go with it. He's so nice. Like yada, yada. And trying to be cool. Like when you're, you know, dating is, is just full. You're, you're really, it, it's kind of, I mean, full of landmines. It's just a very, you're just jumping into something. You have no idea what's going to happen. Right. So I'm just trying to roll with the punches. And then we, he, can, can I ask you a question? You're saying roll with the punches, but you also wanted to be there. You, yes. weren't, you weren't just being submissive. Yes. No. You were rolling with the punches, meaning you were you were engaged, like, oh, I yes. want to do this and I want to be here. So yes. you were actively in it. Yes. Okay. And and the reason why I say roll with the punches is I wouldn't have gotten so fit, you know, like we started making out and I was like, okay, we're making out like real hard in this bar, but like, okay, let's just have fun. Like I'm trying to just, but I definitely wouldn't have like, you know, been that affectionate early you know in on on a first date but i'm trying to go with it and when you say that i'm sorry i don't want to interrupt you but i want us to be clear you weren't going with it because he you were trying to please him like he was 
he was negotiating you in a way that you were like, oh, you were ignoring your something. It was like two people that you were involved in at this point. You're like, you know what? I wouldn't normally make out with mm -hmm. someone at this point, but I but I like them and we're good. And it was yes. your choice as well. Yes. Is that accurate? It is. Okay. And I think this is something that women do a lot and maybe men do it too. You can tell me where you're uncomfortable <laughs> and instead of s stopping and saying, admitting to yourself and the person hey, I'm a little uncomfortable or I don't want to, you know, setting a boundary, you try and convince yourself that you like it. Okay. And so here you are. And that's that. a loaded, by the way, like I know this might, but like that is both in making out with a person on the first date or when you're in bed with someone or this is a guy at work. Like that is a very common thing for women. And it's something that I'm trying to unlearn of like not trying to like something so that it makes the other person less uncomfortable. Okay. <laughs> um, so that's pretty much what I'm operating. But again, we're making out. It's not a big, you know, it's not like I'm being, I'm feeling violated or anything. So anyway, I'm having fun. And then he drives me home because he's a gentleman. And then it's like, I had such a good time. And then we like start making out. And then like, it's a, it's like this funny for me, like, you know, kind of teenager make out session in the car. And then suddenly his hand is like on my arm and then it moves like to my shoulders and he's like holding me. And then it moves to my neck. And all of a sudden I can't breathe because he's actually choking me in this kind of sexually charged way. And this is the first time that that has ever happened to me. I've never even done this in like a long-term relationship. And again, I'm not saying that uh, it, th there's anything wrong with people who enjoy it. Um, if they have discussed it with their partner and and, and at first, and that this is something that they that they do, but it was so destabilizing for me to yeah have known this person for like two and a half hours, and for him to have just the entitlement <laughs> of doing that to me without really right. knowing me and then and when you say can i ask for clarity because yes. we're going to have listeners and we're going to wonder oh, okay you're making out and you got a hand up going so then he's rubbing your neck and maybe you know like you might be passionately holding mm -hmm. each other you're saying he was choking oh. you not trying to kill you but choking right. you, but <laughs> choking you to the point where you can't breathe. That's uncomfortable, and he's taking a liberty with your body. Yes, that would require consent. Y yes. Um, yes, and and and, and it was the, clearly that. Yes, because I didn't even. This is how I kn I know it's happening because I didn't even know that he was my my brain registered. There's no more oxygen oh. before my brain registered the hand on my neck, <laughs> and I and I was like, uh, uh, I can't breathe. And then, I, and I was like, "Oh, this is this is happening." So it was it was that strong and that clear, right, and that deliberate. And then, you know, we went on another date, which this is the part where I feel. Okay, wait. Can I pause you? Yeah. <laughs> so that happens. So obviously, in that moment. Yeah. You did, or I don't want to say obviously. Did you not in that moment feel like, "Whoa, dude, what the fuck"? Was it confusion or like uh, you just did? Did it appear that it was in the passion of sexual play, even though you weren't having sex? But you right. know, um, and that's what it was. And and for him, and I'm not defending him at all. I'm trying to understand. Mm -hmm. For him, it, do you think he thought that was appropriate, or do you think he, he he knew he was doing something inappropriate? No, I I mean, this is comes back to your first question. I tried to like it so that it wasn't this horrible thing that was happening to me, which was like I'm being choked by a stranger in his car. Um, and then, and and so I that was my first impulse was like, okay, try and enjoy this, which is crazy. Like, I, and I'm saying this, this is like <laughs> deeply like humiliating for me, even though I know that it's you humiliating for to, him. You have nothing to be humiliated Exactly, about. but I will say, I'm sharing this. I, I don't enjoy sharing the story, but I think it's important to share it because, yeah, I was telling my friend Nitika about it. And I was like, oh my God, I, I'm, I felt, and she's my best friend. And I was like embarrassed to tell this to her. And as soon as I said that, she's like, I am not embarrassed for you. I am embarrassed for him. And I think that reframe helped me a lot and maybe it can help someone else. Um, 
and and again, this is, you know, a, a small to me in the grand scheme of things that can happen. This feels still very small to things, other things that have happened to me, honestly, and other things that happened to women. And um, but but yeah, I tried to normalize it so that it wasn't this traumatic thing that was happening to me. And that's a very, very, very common thing mm. for women who go through sexual assault. Of course. Um, that's also PTSD in many instances. Your brain is literally being like, this isn't happening to save you and protect you. And that's why many survivors literally forget about the incident and will have flashbacks and then be re reliving it because they're, that's a biochemical thing that your that 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 your body is doing and your brain is doing you know mm, for you but at the same time <laughs> there was a learning opportunity for me to really lean into my intuition and to make sure that when I have that exact like I am trying really to remember what that felt like like that specific feeling and even like give it a color and give it like a shape and so that when I feel that again I will know that this is violating yes. a boundary and that I'm going to stop it if it's safe for me to do it. You're listening to the Mad Enough Podcast. We'll be right back. Hey, everyone. It's Jamie Heath here from the Mad Enough Podcast. And you know summer's here, right? And the 4th of July is right around the corner. And that means it's time for family and fireworks. And most importantly for me, it's time to light the grill. Now, I, for one, have a growing number of people among my friends and family that have chosen to support either their bodies or the planet by eating a plant-based diet. And I'm always looking for ways to include these wonderful folks in my family traditions. And that's where Beyond Meat comes in. Beyond Meat's plant-based products are delicious and they're easy to cook and inclusive of a wide variety of diets. And this year, I've been loving the new Beyond Sausage from Beyond Meats. The current version has a meatier taste than ever before and two great flavors to choose from with hot Italian or bratwurst, which goes perfectly in a hot dog. And the best part, Beyond Sausage is made with a simple plant-based ingredient packed with protein and has zero cholesterol, GMOs, soy, gluten, added hormones, or antibiotics. So before your next cookout, be sure to look for the new Beyond Sausage at your local store with the badge, New Meteor Taste, on the front of the package. For great recipes and where to buy Beyond Sausage, go to beyondmeat.com and get ready to summer better with Beyond. Thank you to Beyond Meat for supporting our show. All right, welcome back to the Mad Enough Podcast. We were talking earlier, um, you know, when we were 14, when I was, you know, when you were 14 and when I was 14, which means uh, it's been going on for a while, um, it was totally normal for teenage boys to slap the butts of g girls All the around time. them. All the time. I would get my, I would, it, would, it would happen to me every day. If not multiple times, a and day I had no idea, I, I had no thought that what I was doing was right. Uh, I mean, I knew you were not supposed to do that. Just like I know you weren't supposed to like uh, throw a baseball at a window exactly. or I don't know something. Yes, I didn't know understand the impact was what it was. Yes, and I don't even know if the girls did at that time. I think it was like acceptable behavior that was like flirting with a line you're not really supposed to. But but the difference is right. Like you were the slapper, we were the slappy, and and that was you know my body wasn't mine. Sorry, I mean, no, uh, no. first of all, Liz. That's <laughs> so okay. Uh, that's not okay, and I'm really sorry. <laughs> and what I'm sorry about is that it that line is blurred. That the fact that that line even has to be because there's some things that would be clear. The guy gets up and punches you in the face with a knuckle, exactly, and everyone's like, "What? The, okay, you walk away." Yes, this is something that you have had to learn to negotiate and still be seen and valued and it's he didn't punch me in the face and it's this yes. and is it me Ap and yes after all three that. hours of being the big and also i just want to add again super high gentleman like uh, above and beyond right. pretty much any first date i've ever been on so that was also so you go home and you're not f you're not like freaked out you're just like what okay i override it i go okay right. that was you go on a second date yes i go on a second date and then yeah i <laughs> the second date was again now that I'm telling the story I'm like so clear so many red flags or not red flags but it's clear what the who this person you know kind of what the issue was shows up to my apartment it happened to be my birthday close to our first date and so our second date was literally him showing up to my apartment with so many gifts that I couldn't see his face um balloons like and I in that moment I remember almost like breaking down crying like this was so thoughtful and sweet and again just you know really made me feel special and it was all these really specific things I'd mentioned and just really kind um but then yeah like what happened on the first date was not like this blip 
and this kind of heat of the moment, you know, maybe this isn't a big deal to him kind of thing. Progressively, I saw it in, and actually what really was a dead giveaway for me was how it happened in the small ways. So like we were ordering coffee and then he like hugs me and I'm like, okay, we're hugging. And I'm a super affectionate person, by the way. Like I am like, you know, it, it is rare that I want to push someone away truly like I love hugging I I love physical touch and this hug you know I was like okay I don't really want to be like hugging you in this coffee shop right now so intensely but I was like going through it or like (laughs) whatever rolling with the punches and then I try and like you know how you just one person kind of breaks away from the hug right you slowly kind of like move your body out he held on and didn't let me do that and that <laughs> was almost just as violating, honestly, as 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 the much more, I think, you know, severe thing of like choking me. Because again, it was like you controlling you. Controlling me. And this in again, in entitlement and almost this and then when I ended up, you know, breaking things off because oh my God. Um Okay, I'm going to say the third thing because I think, I mean, at this point, whatever, my mom doesn't listen to the podcast. But there's a third thing where we're in his car and we're heading to this, like, huge thing that he planned for us. Like, this big, again, now I'm realizing all the flags, but, like, this really cool outing, super thoughtful, blah, blah, blah. And we're in his car and it's, like, 9 a.m. on a Saturday. Like, it's, like, early And then he has his hand, you know, a guy has his hand on your thigh while he's driving. Like, totally cool, totally normal. His hand is on my vagina. Like, like, just like kind of like literally like up my thigh so high that it is touching my private part. And at that point, I just go, imagine I'm on a second date with a guy and I have one hand on the (laughs) driving wheel and I'm just like cupping his balls like with my other hand and I'm just like talking to him while I'm doing that. Just the level of, again, I keep coming back to entitlement that I would have to, (laughs) like I wouldn't even probably do that to my boyfriend if we had been together for like a long time, let alone a person that I barely know. And that time I pushed his hand. I, you know, and, and I started again, like I started being like, oh, okay. And then seeing how he reacts to me pushing his hand, which he like was fine with. But again, that hug and not letting me out of the hug. I was like, I need to get out of this. So that's my super fun dating in New York. <laughs> so <laughs> Don't give up. Um, <laughs> so can know, I, can I, optimism. I don't want to reframe it. I just want to, I, I want to offer some thoughts or some observations. Oh my God, just please do. Because I'm imagining, so this is, I'm trying to think how many men would listen to that story and be really offended. Like, what the fuck did he just do? I'm honestly just trying to think. So that, the purpose is how do I get men and my friends and community to see things differently? The first thing that you had said of, of how he had his hand on your neck and choked you. Um, I mean, that's clear. That, that, that's like, obviously, the, you, you can't do that stuff. For, for, <laughs> um, and then you said you went out, but where it gets confusing, if I may say this, is you went out again. Yeah. And so for a man, they're like, well, I get, she, must, she must have liked it. Mm. Or that was... Or that must have been appropriate. Not it wasn't inappropriate because she's seeing me again. Um, and, and I'm not saying it's appropriate, mm-hmm. but I imagine that can be confusing for someone who's not elevated enough to know the difference. Like when I was 15 and I thought it was okay to slap women's butts. Mm-hmm. Um, this one seems too clear. <laughs> <laughs> and can I make an example actually because I think that's I'm happy you brought that up I think that to compare it to to take the sex out of it if I went on a date with someone a, a, a first date and I we have a great time but at one point during the dinner I take my fork and I just like put it in your hand <laughs> like I just like stab you lightly in 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 your hand and you're like oh that really hurt or, or maybe you don't say anything, but like there's this kind of weird thing that I do. Yeah. 
But then the rest of the dinner is great. And then you decide to come on a date with me again. You are deciding to come on a date with me for a whole range of reasons. Right. Not the fact that you like being stabbed in because, of right? Like, like just because the person, ex- and again, I, I know that I'm glad you're bringing it up because I, I think we don't have enough of these kind of granular conversations around consent. But just because um, you did it once, it doesn't mean you can do it again. And it and just because you did, uh, you know, I uh, and stabbing you in the hand with the fork is like a bad example. No, no, because I feel I, like that's like I, a, or you know, I understand the point. Or or I say something bad about your mom or whatever, yeah. right? It doesn't mean that I that's what you liked and that's why necessarily you're coming on another date with me. You're going on a date with me despite the fact that you that I, I did it. that. But and yes, <laughs> but as I was just walking through it, so I'm yeah. imagining. So there's a guy that, so it seems like what my behavior was acceptable. She's coming out again. Then what you described was he was holding you and like holding her, you know, not letting you go, which I get this point. You know, if my daughter's out with somebody and she's trying to like pull away from a guy and he's holding on tight, I'm like, dude, she's trying to like. Yeah. But also, does a lot of guys see that as, because I do that with my, with my guy friends, you know, I'll come, I'll see Tara, for instance, and I'll give him a hug and then he might be there. I'm like, wait, I'm not done hugging you yet. Right. Or whatever. Yeah, but you didn't choke him two days before that, of course. right? It's like, it's like uh, all of the acts. One hundred percent. That's yeah. why I'm not questioning your right. feelings at all. Right, right, right. I'm I'm speaking on behalf of what men, yeah, yeah, might do. Like that act in itself doesn't seem like a no violation alone. No, no. And then um, obviously, if you're in a car and your desk the second date and you know <laughs> he puts his hand on your vagina, I mean these are clear things. <laughs> I, I, but what I'm trying to get to is I I do think. There are, I think there's a, got a lot of different categories of people. I think there's men that are just clear, mo- uh, behave in monster ways. Mm-hmm. They should not be allowed around women alone. I think most people are not that. Most people are good, decent people who do not want to hurt women. Yeah. Who like sex, might like being rough, not rough. Might like passionate sex. Mm-hmm. Or rough. Some people. Do. Yeah, I'm not, but I'm not trying to judge yeah, yeah. it like with the wrong terminology. And um, that would not do it if there were conversations. If there was like, if you're out with a girl and you did something that was crossing a boundary mm-hmm. that you didn't necessarily think was a boundary. Sure. But after she says to you, yo, Jamie, um, I'm I'm not into you putting your hand on my neck. Yeah, like I, I I'm not saying that you were trying to like kill me or hurt me or something like that. Maybe it's something you're into. Uh, that's not that doesn't work for me, or that's too soon or whatever. Then Jamie's are like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. I thought if, I thought that was an appropriate move in that moment, and so sorry. Mm-hmm. And then you get to see a difference. Obviously, in this guy's case, that's not the case. So I'm I'm only using an example for other conversations. That would be helpful, maybe yes. oftentimes, because then good guys that do that cross the line are not now labeled as something. Yeah, and th- and that man can hear that and be like, "Oh yeah, these things have impact, bro. Mm-hmm. You can't like just put your hand on a woman's neck, and do that. It makes her feel this, makes her feel unsafe. Mm-hmm. You're a little too strong with it. All these things, and you get to say it, and then you get to see how he responds. And most of the time, men would probably respond in a decent way. I agree. Yeah, and and again, if if it was any of these acts in not any of them by themselves yes but I, the first time before the other two acts is what i'm saying like is there room for we've yes. had this conversation what yeah. can women women do better women should not have to do anything better for your liberation and for your safety that's not your fault mm-hmm. it's not your problem or, right. it's, it's men's problem to put you in harm's way right and yet can there be a conversation that while men are being more elevated and learning that women like yourself who are super amazing and articulate and have the data to also help educate or help have a discussion in that environment. Mm-hmm. Again, not this guy, Steve yeah. or Bob or Jim, right. whatever his name is. Yeah. The next guy. Yeah. Yes. And and again, I don't, well, I, I and again, I really do, I have to reiterate how I feel really uh, embarrassed that, that I, you know, dated this person in the first place and then went on another date and like, but, but, but again, I, I shouldn't, I, but thank I'm you. Sorry. I'm sorry you feel that because that's bullshit. Yes. And maybe that's part of my mistake and my fault by even asking you follow up mm-hmm. questions that then allows you to feel that. 
no, 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 no. And it's not you. I, I, I think I'm reiterating it so that, again, people who are listening who also feel this way, like I, men who are abusive – one, and, and I have I was in a physically um, yeah. d- difficult uh, relationship. Ninety five percent of the time, this person was wonderful, yeah. and this man was wonderful. Five percent of the time, he was a monster, right? Or what, even monster. I feel like is a deep, I understand. Like, like not you know he 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 was abusive, and I think that that monster good guy or you know bad guy good guy, good guy binary makes it harder for us to see abuse when it happens mm. because it's not happening like we see it in the movies where it's not this guy that's you know this horrible and and this person you know the reason why I went on a second date with him was because outside of the choking which again sounds crazy but outside of that it, it was wonderful i i you know he or he had wonderful qualities and so that's one thing i i, I want to say and then the second thing I want to say is that when I when I say that I overrode my own in, intuition and that I tried to enjoy something that was um, that was invasive and that was violating, like that's the part that I want women to hear, mm-hmm. and that I want um, my future daughter to, to to hear and to change because I I really do think women have been uh, just. And again, nurture nature. We'll have that conversation another day. But we 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 have been socialized um, right. to put other people's needs before our own, to you know be convenient, to be obedient, and I think that that is and something to overlo- that over and to overlook and to oh yes and and to be forgiving of something that should yes. not, is is should, you should not have to be yes. in order to survive in order yes. to be seen to be valued to get whatever exactly. But there's also a responsibility there to do something to 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 do it differently if it is safe for you to do so right and so and and if you take in again outside of this context of physical you know um uh, whatever you want to call it that can turn into like this martyr complex of like you don't treat me well and like you don't do anything for me or this guy did this and and are you standing up for yourself though right. cuz i think that's the other side of it you know of we talk a lot about what what men can do differently and obviously we've laid out a lot of different things in this episode but i i do think that women need to be um yeah just like mo- more assertive and and connected to their bodies and themselves when something doesn't feel right and to say it mm-hmm. and not be polite and be obedient um, especially, especially when, yeah, something's happening to, to you that you're not consenting to. Mm. It's like, and it also makes, you know, there's studies that show that when a woman is with, with, with sexual harassment anyways, if a woman talks back again, if it is safe, but when a woman talks back, the effect like of that interaction is so much smaller than if she doesn't, than if she just ignores it and keeps walking. Like it actually can be reparative for women yeah. in their lives to say what they need and set boundaries mm. and hold people, you know, men accountable to 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 them. And to your point, I think a lot of mo- a lot of men are like, "Great. I want to know what you like. I want to know what you don't like." And in and that can be healing for for both parties to be able to just be clear and direct and and that's the stuff that doesn't happen yeah. as much. Mm. Liz, I'm sorry. I hate. Thank that. you. I hate that you even have to articulate this, it's gross. so that we can have a conversation about it, so that um, we can all learn and and you know um, unpack, and that you then have to experience something, and then feel two ways about it. Like you're happy to share it, and also feel embarrassed at the same time. Like that is a burden that I'm so sorry that you experienced. Mm. And I would have beat his ass. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I say that just out of love for you. You're listening to the Mad Enough Podcast. We'll be right back. Hey, everyone. It's Jamie Heath here from the Mad Enough Podcast. And I want to tell you about a little product that's become my secret weapon for everyday comfort. Me undies. With the weather heating up, many of us are dreaming of hitting the pool or the beach to escape the hot summer sun. And searching for a new bathing suit that doesn't compromise comfort might be a hard find. So Me Undies has just the thing for you. And right now, you can show off your inner environmentalist with the new sustainably sourced swimwear collection, partially made from recycled nylon fabrics and water bottles. Now, caring for our planet has never looked so good. 
And MeUndies products are made with comfort and style in mind, in that order, comfort and style. There are ultra soft fabrics and highly customizable designs put just as much importance on the feel and look of each piece. Their swimmer collection features an array of choices with trunks, board shorts, and briefs for men, and mix and match bikinis, one pieces, and tankinis for women. MeUndies swimwear is ultra chlorine resistant, sustainably sourced, and features UPF 50 for extra sun protection. Now me personally, I live in my MeUndies socks. I do, really, I live in them. The ultra breathable fabric and fit are perfect for long and busy days at work, and I'm excited to grab a pair of their swim trunks next. Now to get 25% off your first order, plus free standard shipping, visit MeUndies.com slash man enough. And if you're not satisfied, your purchase is on MeUndies. That's 25% off your first order at MeUndies.com slash man enough. Thank you to MeUndies for supporting the show. All right. Welcome back to the Man Enough podcast. Maybe we can pivot to an idea. I want to ask you a question. Oh, uh, coming in with coming in hot. Uh, it's not coming you never in hot. ask like you. Ne- your questions are so good. This is not going to be a great so- question. Uh-oh. This is just a simple question. Okay, great. You've been doing this now for two years. Almost, yeah. Almost, almost, right? Almost We're in our second season. You know, whatever. Share a little bit about your experience about spending time with two men, mm-hmm. who I know you know care about being better men, care about helping other men be better. And you've witnessed us do some things right, and maybe we stumble too because we're idiots. At the same time as being maybe wonderful in other ways, um, how has it been? I don't even mean about your experience with me, like what you think about me and my growth. I mean, what is it like for you as a woman in this space, wanting the best for men, mm-hmm. also experiencing the worst of men? How what has it been for you? Your experience? Uh, my experience being on on this podcast w- with you has been very healing. And I, I almost feel like it's a baby. I've never had a baby, but I feel like we have this thing that we're nurturing mm. and that at the beginning we were all, you know, sort of running around and didn't know what it would look like. And um, is I don't know if that's what you think. I would wonder if my baby's going to be like ugly or not. Um, but yeah, you don't know. You don't know what's gonna, what, what it's going to look like. And I feel like we've yeah, we've evolved so much, not just individually, but I think as a unit and as a community, like the people who are making this podcast, who, you know, people don't get to see, but we are seeing and, and witnessing um, and, and they are witnessing us. I, I feel like, yeah. And, and we didn't start off feeling all, all feeling good mm-hmm. about, about everything. And I was um, really, challenged at the beginning you, uh, about you, you cried a lot <laughs> in the beginning um i don't necessarily mean on camera i mean off camera oh yeah yeah um yeah and it was because probably you were experiencing two guys that you know care mm-hmm. and yet yeah you're experiencing the good and the ugly or yes. whatever those terms yes are and and the the real uh, struggle right of of progress and and growth and the difficulties that come with having this conversation you know uh be, between two two opposing you know genders mm. and um opposing is and, funny opposing the term well, cuz we're not opposing but that's the whole thing you know we had Richard Reeves on and one of the things that i i i really wanted to stress is we can't have this conversation around masculinity in the same way um that we've had a conversation about women like like we're we should be learning from the failures of feminism and feminist discourse and the way that we've progressed um you know as a as a society when it comes to women and we should be taking in those learnings and then uh you know doing it better when it comes to men and boys and what i feel like is happening is that it's still two silos it's still like well we got to talk about more boys and men because we're talking too much you know we've gone too far with women when that again it uh, you know, or if we're talking about men not doing well in school, we have to juxtapose it with data about women doing really well in school. And it's like, why? Like, like if you were in a, let's say society is like a family unit, right? If you have a son and a daughter, um, and the the daughter is doing really well in science and math, and the boy, you know, the your son is struggling. Talk about 
that with your son about how he's struggling, but you wouldn't like ju- you wouldn't come in and be like she's doing really well and you're doing less well than her. Um, so we've got to mm. bring you up to her level. You would just kind of look at what your son is dealing with and 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 it's their own unique position and and try and help them with what they need. It's super strange to me that we but still juxtapose that- it in that way. So I hear that. Okay. Can I challenge yes, it? Yes, yes. So yes, I hear that. That makes complete sense when you talk about it and within a family and you talk about one-offs, which would be my one-offs, my son and my daughter. But what you do do a lot is you bring in data and statistics mm-hmm. to support an idea. It's not just like, here's this one event, you're looking at it over time. Is it not fair to say that if boys are struggling in a certain area, and we want to identify why it wasn't just a one mm-hmm. pocket of mm-hmm. boys and men, but it seems to be across the board. Mm-hmm. Men are suffering or struggling in this area. Mm-hmm. And women seem to be excelling in this area. So wouldn't the juxta- juxtaposition, which by the way, I don't know if I've ever used that word once, so I'm so you're glad you said it because really now nah, I used it, warranted and understood because you're mm-hmm. using it so that you can gain knowledge. So women are doing well here. Well, why is it? Are classrooms more designed? Is the reason, are the women, the people sitting teaching them, are women mm-hmm, teachers mm-hmm. no longer men as much? So boys don't relate to, yeah. they don't have someone that looks like right. them, represents them as much. That's, what, for me, really interesting to hear. Yeah. But not to make it a woman's like, we're trying to dumb down women or not do what you're doing. But here's the difference. Women were struggling in school because of men, <laughs> right? Women weren't allowed in schools because of men. Of course. Men are struggling in school, not because of women. Correct. They're struggling in school. And that's, we should talk about that and acknowledge that. And that's a real big, that's a, that's a societal problem that we should all feel, um, you know, uh, a part of trying to solve. But when we use the same language and the same framing, in conversations around sexism, as we do in conversations around masculinity, we're actually uh, w- we're actually distorting the truth, and again, we're setting it up as if women's success is coming at the cost of of yeah. men, whereas before that was the case, tr- truly, right? Like in in like men's laws, success was at the cost of women. Y- y- yeah, it was. yeah, and and now women you know, uh, have more freedom to, 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 to be educated in certain countries, not all over the world, um, certainly. And, and so, but when we still use that same language and that, and, and that, uh, juxtaposition of the sexes, it suggests correlation when there are act- or, yeah, or causation that. where there isn't any, does that make sense? It makes complete sense. And I, and I agree with it. I also don't, I worry sometimes that then that can serve as a distraction if the point is how are we trying to uncover the truth. Mm-hmm. And yet I understand language matters. But see, I think it stands in the way of us coming up with the better solutions to that problem. I think making it a, a, a men versus woman problem instead of making it a man and a boy problem actually prevents us from coming up with 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 ways of actually solving that because again i think what happens is then we go well what are 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 we doing too much for women are we and it's like no <laughs> it's like not the solution right if again if two of your children one of them is doing really well and the other one is not doing well you don't go i'm going to give less to the one who's doing well you're going to say we need more support for the one that 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 isn't agreed i think but we're if, agreeing but, but does that make sense? It does. That, that I just keep hearing, and I'm imagining any other man that's listening, does that right. mean by, by identifying, in no way do I want women to, I don't want to have less resources for the women that are doing well in school. I don't want to change anything about why the women mm-hmm. are being successful. Keep doing what we're doing. Mm-hmm. And yet, if schools have changed that used to be more recess, more stuff, more stuff, yes. that boys used to run around more and they, could, they had shorter pockets of... of um, holding their attention, mm-hmm. um, which I've experienced with my boy and girl. You know, my daughter will sit in a conversation with me for 30 minutes and my son, you can get him for five seconds and yeah. he wants to go throw something off the wall. I, I think there's some inherent stuff in there. But yeah. we've learned some s- data that boys need this. So how do we implement that in that? And it's yeah. it's not to say it'll give less to the girls. And I think that's what oftentimes happens when we have this right. discussion, maybe not just about school, but when we're talking about equality and sexes and masculinity, oftentimes men feel that when I mention the things that I need, mm-hmm. 
that it can be discredited if I ever, not maybe compare it, but use women as a benchmark to make a point or to cite what's happening. You know, right. Do you know what I'm saying? But the, we, and, and I get it. Right, it it makes for a better headline, <laughs> and and a better story. That, but it, I think we are underestimating the way that that story structure is fueling okay. the Andrew Tates and the and and the men who and 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 boys who are struggling and who see that headline and say like, well, okay, well, it's her fault, or women have everything now. Um, and and now I shouldn't be concerned with sexism, and I shouldn't be concerned with um, you know building a, a more equal world. It's gone. Feminism has gone too far. Mm. Like I really think that again, we think you think about this stuff a lot, um, but a lot of people don't have honestly the luxury, right? They're they're working, they're doing their thing, and I think what frustrates the the double whammy on that is that <laughs> women <laughs> are part of so much of the work that would actually help uh, boys and men, particularly with, 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 with education, I agree with you. We need a very different education system. We need uh, teachers who have a lot more support and higher wages in order to, to, to really be present for their students' individual needs and, right. and boys' in individual needs. But do you know who is way more likely to vote <laughs> for those kinds of policies that are, uh, you know, investing in education? It's it's women. And, you know, who's more likely not to support um, social programs and that kind of income redistribution? It, it tends to be men. Men yeah. vote that way. And so that's the part that, like, anchors me even more <laughs> where I see this headline. And not only is it su suggesting that you know, men are failing and, and at the, you know, and, and it's coming off of the backs of, of, of women's liberty. But on top of it, you know, it, it, this is the part where I talk about the solution, right? It doesn't point us in that right, in, in into that solution to blame women. <laughs> it points us in the wrong direction. If we actually understand and support and listen to women, I think we'd have a society that would be way better for men and boys as think, well. Do you think that when you use those terms, when you say that we blame women, my experience is this. I don't think most men blame women. I think loud voices blame women. I think there's political groups that say this or, you know, there's there are voices. So that becomes the rhetoric. That becomes what people are responding to. That's what, of course, you're fighting against in that. But people in the grassroots and the ground, I don't know if most people think the reason why boys are struggling in this way is because women are excelling and they're in my way. Nor, Just like I don't think most white people think that they're not excelling because black people are taking their jobs. I think that becomes a conversation, a loud mm -hmm. conversation, and then other people hear it being talked about. So of course we have to fight against it. Yeah. But I don't think your average person thinks that. And then your average listener, and I'm sorry, I'm not saying that to discredit the, the gravity of what you shared, but, but I'm saying it in terms of many listeners, many people who are walking through the world, men, might not relate as much to be like, ah, look, I, I'm having my son struggle or this and this and this, and I'm not, I don't want women to do any less. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I may not do it perfectly. I need to be better. Mm -hmm. I think most men are good. Most care about this issue, whether they know how to practice it or not. I just don't know if most men are um, wanting to to say that our success or that women are in the way or, or your liberation and successes is the cause for my demise. But that's a worthy conversation that I think most people don't relate to. Can I challenge that? Please, please. <laughs> as much as I love that for us, <laughs> I think that that's what most men – that's the intention for most men is to not blame women. And if you went around and you asked men, like, do you blame women for the position you're in? They'd be like, no, of course not. But I'm looking at men's actions. I'm, I'm not really interested in your intentions. I'm, I'm looking at what you're doing and just based on what you're doing – and and when I say you, I mean even, again, laws and society, right? Like anti-abortion – uh, laws which are rampant now and without Roe v. Wade, like 
that's blaming women. <laughs> like of course that, it is. Like, right. Like, and, and if I went up to, uh, you know, a, an extreme pro-life judge and, or anti-choice uh, judge, and I said, do you, do, you, uh, do you blame women? They'd be like, no, of course not. But I'm looking at the way that they act, and they are blaming women. Um, we, 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 we blame women all the time. And we also, again, the same thing applies to people of, of, of color, yeah. right? Like it, in just the way that our society functions and the laws and the policies that we have. And so I think that most people don't want to embody that ideology of hatred towards people of color, towards women, but it is an unconscious bias. And that's also, that's, you know, that's everywhere, do. right? Women hate women. <laughs> Let's be honest. Women interrupt women more. Women don't believe women uh, as much as they believe men. I mean, there's studies about uh, women, men don't uh, trust a female pilot as much as they do a male pilot, but women also don't t trust a female pilot as much as they trust a male pilot. And that data breaks my heart. It breaks my heart because well, it's I like we it, we've internalized it so much, and, and that's so. When a guy's like, "I don't have that," I'm like, "I have it." <laughs> so you probably do. You probably have some of that. You that said you need that. To unlearn. You said that. When, sorry, I don't want to be good at semantics, but these that's are terms it. that I oftentimes hear, and I just go like, it doesn't sit well. Like women hate women. Mm -hmm. Black people hate black people. I don't think black people hate black people. I do think. Black people don't trust black people mm. because we're taught because we're we're hearing the stuff we're raised since I was a kid to see how I'm represented on television and in movies mm -hmm. because I see the news and um, you ask a lot of black people would you rather walk on the street at night with a white person over here that you don't know or a black person over here a lot of black people say I'd rather on the white side because not because there's data that says the black person's going to do more damn than the white but because we're fed the same Kool Aid yeah. or or shit. Mm -hmm. So if you told me that women don't trust women as much to fly a plane, to do this, to be the educator, to run a business, to do all these things, I would say yes. Mm -hmm. Does that equate to then women hate women? I don't know if it means that. Um, because I think black people love black people. And yet what's so sad is that then we don't see ourselves in our full glory as we see somebody else. Yeah. And women don't see yourselves yeah. in the same glory as you might see another mm -hmm. because you're taught to not trust yourself yeah. and to trust the others. I mean, that's that. Right? But that. not that you hate each other, not that you hate women. I mean, I think hate, right? Like, I mean, misogyny is I, by definition, uh, I think a hatred of, of, of women. And, and I think, you know, I, I know hate is a strong word for, for you. Um, and so that, that might not resonate, but, but I, but uh, there's a lack of love. I feel like I do sense that hatred and that misogyny mm. towards women, even in the way that I will, I don't know, kind of love to like hate on another woman, like a woman I don't know, a female celebrity who's just like on, you know, gets on my nerves. I see it in myself or even female politicians. I'm harder on female politicians than I am on male politicians, yeah. for sure. Yeah. And we see it. In again, not just in anecdotal sharing, but we see it in research. Um, women and men are harder on female candidates. Yeah. I think it's worth noting that a lot of people tense up and don't identify with something. If I behave this way, then it equals this, or it equals that I, that I think this way. Versus when I behave this way, here's the impact of those choices. Mm -hmm. I think there are men dare I say this, that have been abusive to their wives and love them. And we oftentimes will say, he doesn't love his wife. He doesn't have, now he may not respect women. He may somehow, but it does, and now if there are men, and I'm real uncomfortable even saying that because I, I want to beat the guy's ass who hits his, I'm not, no way I'm mm -hmm. saying. But if I now just say that men who do things that impact women wrongfully or illfully, that then men hate women or that I'm not on your side, 
I think rather it says, wow, how far behind are men? And that is not love actually towards women when you do this. Right. This is not helping women. This actually, when you do this, this, and this, it impacts women in ways that you don't appreciate or don't see or don't seem to care about. That a lot of people, I think men can embrace and go like, oh, okay. But as soon as we label them, kind of like race, if you're not, you, like racism. Mm -hmm. If you say to a guy, you're racist when you do this and this, mm -hmm. you're a racist. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. So now they can't even see their right. actions. Yeah. You're not a racist. Fine. I know that you don't hate black people. But do you see that this action and this action and this action does not help black people? It hurts people. Yeah. Then maybe it's like, oh, okay, I can see that action because they're not now because they don't resonate with I hate black people. I hate women. Right. So that's why I, I think I've had this conversation a lot with people. So to be mindful of how we. Yeah. We want people to change, and how can I get them to change? And by labeling and making right. a blanket statement doesn't always help. Yeah, and and it, it's so interesting because I think that it doesn't help m men, but it helps women. Oh, that's fair. <laughs> because the, being able to label that feeling that you feel from a very young age throughout mm -hmm. your adult life in small and in big ways of growing up as a woman in our society, you do feel that hatred. <laughs> You do. And yes. being able to say that that's what it is actually can be really helpful. I think it's important. I, I, what I do want to f have us close with is um, we have people listening. First of all, a lot of women listen to our podcast. So the fact that you share that experience and have women hear that and us hold space for it mm -hmm. and not discredit it. Oh, godly, I hope in my questions, in no way have I discredited or unvalidated no. any of that, yeah. right? Um, my questions wants to be so that we can um, understand it because I think a lot of people don't under understand. Yeah, You know, I have a son who's 20, who's a, an amazing son, but along the way he's had to ask me questions like what's appropriate, what's yes. not, with a good heart. Yeah. And unless someone tells him right. and models it yes. to him, he doesn't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He sees from television. He yeah, sees yeah. other friends. He sees stuff. So then he models behaviors, could, mm -hmm. that um, he wouldn't. Yeah. So having the conversation is helpful. Yes. Like, this is not, okay, dude. Yeah. And and that's uh, the part that's enraging is, like, guys like this are ruining it for guys like your son. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I want men to sh show affection and not be... Yeah. you know, constrained of, of, um, in, in that way. And, and I guess I don't know what the advice is for, what would be your advice? For My men? advice is to men is first of all, listen to the stories that women tell you, mm -hmm. their fears, their, their trepidation and, and, um, resistance and why that sometimes when you go out on dates and are with women, if you see body language, that's yeah. a little bit close. Like, of course, this is every day. I mean, I have a six year old now daughter who has friends that are seven and eight, and already now you can see how they're behaving because they're already acclimating themselves to how the world sees them and what they see in TV, you know, all, you're already yeah. seeing it. Yeah. So listen and trust that women are telling the truth of their experience. Mm -hmm. Do you wanna to contribute to it? Do you wanna to add to that or do you wanna change it? And if I believe most of us men want to change it, then that means we have to change. Not just listen, we have to change. Change the little behaviors. Have grace, have compassion. Understand that when you go in, like before, it used to be okay to slap a girl's butt when you were 30 years ago. It's not anymore, so you don't do it. Mm -hmm. even, even if you don't, it used to be okay to maybe hug somebody and not let go. But when you do that now, it makes someone feel unsafe. Mm -hmm. You don't do that. Um, I mean, these are just maybe little small tangible things. Um, I, th I think we have to listen. And then make the adjustments whether or not you agree. Yeah. Because you can only agree with something if you if you recognize and understand something, right? Otherwise, I can't agree. I'm just like agreeing to agree. Even if you don't understand it, if you care about the liberation of all people, and in this case, women, and for men to be better and better representation of that, then you listen, you trust, and um, and you change our behaviors. Mm -hmm. And you'll have better, I mean, coming back to just if we're, sex, like you'll have better sex if, <laughs> the right? Like if, if that's your goal. That's what I've learned from you. Yes. If you do that stuff, sex is better. Yes. 
check in, you know? And That's an and, though. That can't be the reason why. No. It just is a byproduct. Yes. I of, mean, of course. Yes, of just, like, checking in with the person while you're, you know, physical with them. And even, like, if you're with a woman, just being like, how are you feeling? And not in a, like, let's stop everything. How are you feeling? Are mm. you consenting? But, like, how, you know, just a quick check-in. If you're not sure. Yeah. I think that can go a long way. Liz, I appreciate you all the time. I appreciate how you show up for this conversation, how you're willing to um, deal with us dummies sometimes mm -hmm. and also champion what we do great. You are a big advocate of mine. You always say kind things about um, how, I, how I try to show up. Um, and also, um, you've challenged me on things and where I can be better. Um, so you do it with grace. And I appreciate you and I love you. I you know. appreciate you and I love you too. Um, all right. Should we, um, what does it mean to you to be man enough? <laughs> <laughs> no. No. What does it mean to you to be enough? To not betray myself. Hmm. And like have a perfect opportunity to betray myself and not do it. Not do it. That's in those moments in my life is when I'm like, That was a high five. Yeah, so, and, and that's what I felt like I did in that moment. I kind of betrayed myself. And that's okay, but I don't want, I don't, that doesn't feel good. Right. What about you? What does it mean to be enough? What does it mean to be enough? What does it mean to be man enough? I'll answer that question because yeah. it's a little bit different that and is. it's the same. Um, right now, to wake up on Saturdays and Sunday mornings and get the kids and so my wife can sleep in. We always want to be a better father or a better husband or a better this or a better that or a better whatever it is. Mm -hmm. A better journalist, a better podcast host, a better actress and writer and all the stuff. But rather than saying I want to be a better husband, I just want to be better. I just want to do better. Mm -hmm. And if you put effort into that, you will then be a better all husband right. and a better this and a better that. You just show up better. Yeah. So, um, so man enough to mean means be <laughs> means to be better, to try to do better. And in this case, for me, what it means to be man enough is wake up on Saturday and Sunday mornings and be up with the kids so that my wife can sleep in, regardless of my excuse. I Let's love that. Start there. <laughs> Double documented. I'm now. doubling down on it. <laughs> um, all right. For everyone who's listened and um, uh, enjoyed a, a conversation between Liz and I, which is long time coming because we have these conversations along the way with other people involved, but I'm really glad we got to do this. Me too. Um, come back and see us again or watch us again. Where can they find us, Liz? Uh, they can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcast, or www.manenough. Slash podcast. W -W yeah, dot. Just like, there's three W's. Yeah, three, that's with three. a dot. Yeah. What about the HTTP slash slash? Uh, that's, do we still do that? No, we don't do it. We don't um, do it you can, Yeah, and follow us on YouTube. You can watch it and all the stuff. Um, until next time, I'm Jamie Heath. I'm Liz Plank. And this is Man, Man Enough. Enough.